side effects would be a um, if you have diabetes of course if you're lowering your blood sugar quite a bit you'd be at risk for diabetes you could definitely see a decline from that hi everybody welcome to the kidney coach youtube channel i'm naturopath fiona chin co-founder of kidney coach kidney disease solution and kygenesis our range of nutraceuticals designed for people diagnosed with chronic kidney disease and the co-conditions that go with them. And I'm joined again today by expert in the field, Jessie Anna Seville. Just wanted to circle back around. So give me, just so, because I know people will be curious, what are some of the side effects of the SGLT2s? Because I know what happens is people go in and their doctor's like, SGLT2, new medication, it looks like it's it protected. Forever. So some of the side effects would be a uh, like a UTI, which honestly makes sense because if you're increasing sugar into your urinary tract uh, and you have fungus or you have candida or you have other, because your, your urinary tract has its own microbiome, right? We always hear about the gut microbiome. If your urinary tract has its own microbiome too. Less talked about, in my opinion, equally, if not more significant when it comes to kidney disease. But um, if you're going to push a lot of sugar through there, you are going to feed certain microbes that love sugar. So Hardly makes sense. It's a potential uh, side effect that you'd be aware of and be watching for. Um, if you have diabetes, of course, if you're lowering your blood sugar quite a bit, you'd be at risk for diabetic ketoacidosis. So that would be one that you, I mean, you should have a smart doctor who's looking at your overall regimen and has some good follow-up and knows you're testing your blood sugar when you start these. But that is some of the side effects that they saw in the research as well. Um, there is an initial drop in kidney function when you take them. There's a couple of drugs that do this. So Sartan does this for blood pressure. The SGLT2s do this, which is why they won't use them at a later stage. Because if your GFR is 10, 12, 15, and you drop someone's GFR by five points, that's a lot, right? Yeah. Whereas if your GFR is 40, and drop by five points. That's still a lot, but it's not um, recoverable. Um, and it so makes sense too, right? Because the kidneys are going to be suddenly working harder to flush all this sugar out until that sugar's sort of reset in the system and the other benefits sort of kick in. So that makes complete it, sense to me. It, yeah. it to I mean, it totally does. And again, you're thinking like you're, you're playing, the kidneys as they decline are resetting into new homeostasis all the time. So mm -hmm. if you start a drug that now is constricting the inter and then like everything's changing you could definitely see a decline from that mm -hmm. and it, I think right now there's a lot of hesitation on if that decline is actually gives enough benefit to the patient yeah. you know because okay. even like the weight loss that comes from it the change in blood pressure that's you know that's still not an overnight thing that's three six nine months down the road so if you're kind of on the edge of um needing to look at transplant or dialysis your physician's probably not going to recommend an sgft2 because the benefits may not be um soon enough or fast enough for you to actually get an outcome yeah and i guess you know one of the things of chronic kidney disease is the kidneys loss of ability to maintain homeostasis so you put a drug in there and it doesn't bounce back to that homeostatic um balance that it should have and it's just taking too long so that that makes all that all makes, yeah, sense. So. makes sense and i guess that's why i really love using well i mean i don't use the drugs because i'm not a doctor <laughs> but um but that's i feel like one of the big benefits of an herbal regimen over a pharmaceutical reg i mean there's lots of benefits but that's a big one for late stage because herbs mm -hmm. tend to be a lot more gentle but equally efficacious and so mm -hmm. sometimes, and you can titrate them a lot slower and bring them in slower and at different stages. Like I just feel like you can customize it more. So I think uh, that's one reason I would definitely prefer that for a lot of patients. A um, yeah. couple other risks that they saw in the studies, uh, uh, hypotension. And again, if you're on a lot of blood pressure meds and you change the whole mixture, what's going on, mm -hmm. you could have drop in your blood pressure, hypotension being low blood pressure and increase of bone fractures is the other one so it's pulling calcium out of the bones is that part of what it's doing there yeah, so it's that, i mean it is on every 
I've got a couple studies up. And again, when you look at this, what you're, what you're, and I mean, this is uncommon, right? Uh, but they probably saw this. So it's hard to say, was it the drug that caused it? Was it like that particular study population? And I don't know, but it is one that they had to cite in their right. package insert and in their research. So bone fractures would be uh, another one um, uh, that potentially could be a problem. All right, remember to hit subscribe and like. That means that you'll get notified anytime we put out a new video. If you want to know more about us, head to www.kidneycoach.com. You'll find all our products and links to our Facebook page, Instagram, and everything else that we do on social media. But you'll find us all on Facebook forward slash kidney disease, same with Instagram. Jess, thanks again. Always value you. And to everyone listening, thanks for being part of our community. We hope you found this useful. Till next time, bye. Bye-bye.